Hi again, everyone. Mike Conrad here, founder and CEO of Aqueous Technologies and host of the Reliability Matters podcast with you once again for more tips and tricks for cleaning circuit assemblies. If you've been in the electronic assembly industry for any amount of time, there's little doubt you've heard of the term ECM or electrochemical migration. What is ECM? What causes ECM? And what types of failures does it produce? I'll answer those questions when I return in just a moment. Electrochemical migration, or ECM, is the process of laying conductive materials over insulating materials, resulting in a reduction of resistivity or electrical shorts. To be even more descriptive, ECM is the dissolution and movement of metal ions in the presence of electric potential, which results in the growth of dendritic structures between anodes and cathodes. The process is most commonly observed in printed circuit boards, where it may significantly decrease the insulation between conductors, frequently resulting in electrical shorts. The main factor facilitating ECM is moisture. Usually the process involves several stages, water absorption, anode metal dissolution, ion accumulation, ion migration to the cathode, and dendritic growth. Once the conductive metallic dendrite grows between the anode and the cathode, the resistance between the anode and cathode drops to almost zero, creating an electrical short. Sometimes there's not enough dissolution of the metals to create a dead short, but it could still result in a reduction of electrical resistance. Parasitic electrical leakage is a good example of that. If a circuit assembly is not cleaned and conductive residues are allowed to remain on the assembly, which is a common phenomenon when boards are reflowed using no clean flux and not subjected to a cleaning process, the ionic residues may become problematic under specific circumstances. It takes three factors to create an ECM event. First, the assembly must have an electrical bias. All circuit assemblies have an electrical bias. Second, there must be a conductive residue on the assembly. Conductive residues can be deposited onto the assembly from several processes, including board fabrication, component fabrication, human interaction, assembly processes, and of course, through the flux itself. Finally, there must be moisture. Where does moisture come from? The most common form of moisture is simple humidity. Electrochemical migration failure mechanisms fall into three categories, dendritic growth, parasitic electrical leakage, and conductive anodic filament, or CAF. The most common and most severe manifestation of ECM is dendritic growth. That's where all the drama occurs. Here you can see dendrites growing in real time, thanks to our friends and colleagues at Foresight. The metal structure growing between the anode and the cathode is conductive. While the conditions to make this video were ideal, allowing the dendrites to grow rapidly, normally in the field, dendrites take between weeks and even months to grow. The second form of ECM is parasitic electrical leakage. Parasitic leakage is not commonly visible. It lacks a visible metal structure found in dendritic growth. While parasitic leakage does not normally lead to a dead short, it does, in effect, reduce the dielectric properties of the laminate, allowing some current to flow between the anode and the cathode. This could lead to rapid battery drain if the board is operated with a battery, or situations which may cause the assembly to malfunction. The third form of ECM is conductive anodic filament, or CAF. I like to refer to CAF as a subterranean ECM event, as it occurs not on the surface of the assembly, but between the layers of the assembly. While surface level ECM requires three elements, electrical bias, conductive residue, and moisture, a fourth element is required for CAF. There must be a pathway. On the surface of the assembly, the entire assembly is a pathway. Between the layers of the board, pathways are normally created during the board fabrication process. Pathways may be created when the glass resin in the board material become separated, commonly referred to as dry weave. Pathways may also be created during the drilling process. As through holes and vias are drilled into the board, dull drill bits or excessive pressure on the drill bits may cause damage to the laminate, creating pathways. 
Damage to the laminate may also occur as a result of multiple thermal excursions. After the drilling process, the through holes and vias are plated using a conductive plating solution. The conductive plating solution can leach into the gaps in the laminate material, providing one of the three necessary pillars of ECM. While surface level ECM can be prevented by performing a thorough cleaning process, CAF cannot be prevented by cleaning. CAF can be prevented by preventing the pathways from forming. If there are no pathways, the conductive plating solution will have nowhere to go. The potential for CAF can be mitigated or reduced by performing a thorough bake-out process to remove any moisture between the layers of the board. Remember, no moisture, no ECM. However, even if a bake-out process is performed, moisture can penetrate through the layers of the board over time, especially if the board is located in a harsh environment. For complete and permanent CAF elimination, it's best to ensure there are no pathways for the electrical bias, conductive materials, and moisture to exploit. Many assemblers believe the application of conformal coating will prevent moisture intrusion. This is not accurate. While conformal coating will prevent higher volumes of fluids from contacting the assembly, it's important to note that conformal coating materials are permeable, allowing small amounts of moisture to permeate through the coating. If CAF is a concern, select board materials that are CAF resistant. So to wrap up, to prevent ECM from occurring on the surface of the assembly, subject the assemblies to a thorough cleaning process. To prevent CAF, select CAF resistant board materials, which reduce the possibility of gaps between the laminate layers. Hope you found this topic helpful. Please keep your questions and topic suggestions coming. Send them right over here to my email address and be sure and listen to or watch the Reliability Matters podcast. Check it out on your favorite podcast app or watch the podcast on the Reliability Matters YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app or if you're watching the podcast on the Reliability Matters YouTube channel, be sure to click the subscribe and bell icons to receive new episode notifications. We release new episodes on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Well, thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and perhaps most importantly, keep doing it right. I'll see you again very soon.